I'll be very quick in the slides that I have to present because I've just realized we're, we're behind schedule quite a bit now. So I'm quickly going to cover just some of the research that I've been doing at Cranford University and also how it links in to what, we, what you've been listening to. Fundamental thing at the beginning of any service, at the beginning of any product, is design. Without design, the product wouldn't exist, the service wouldn't exist. So we have to envision a way of creating this product. So first, the first couple of questions are how to create it, why to create it. So what I'm looking at is an area called design rationale. And what design rationale looks at, it asks the reasons of why something is essentially the way it is. So take, for example, a, a typical medical device, a, a blood glucometer. Why is that designed the way it is? How is it designed the way it is? So design rationale looks into these fundamental questions. So, for example, design rationale looks into uh, developing a repository for storing design knowledge and past cases. It makes explicit use of the design how design criteria are applied to influence a given decision in design. It also assists in reasoning and in communication. So essentially, design rationale is a method and an approach whereby tools are developed now. So again, the definition is provided. D design rationale is an explanation of how and why something is designed the, the way it is. So who are involved? Who are the actors who are involved in design rationale, for example? They could be medical device designers, the people that are designing the devices, medical device manufacturers, the people who are making them, and the end customers, the people who use these. For example, the regulatory authorities as well will also need to know how a device is developed the way it is, why it is developed the way it is, before it can be approved to market, before the consumers can use that device. So if I was to give you an example, let's, let's use a lancet. Um, a lancet is just, you, you, you put the lancet on your finger, you, take a, you prick your finger, you take a microliter of blood on the finger, you put that blood into, let's say, a template onto the device, that device then that goes into the medical device. You, you analyze the sample of blood. So what we're looking at is how and why, essentially, the process and the design of the, de uh, the device is designed the way it is. Why is it like that? And more essentially, who would want to know? And again, what are the issues as well? So the people who would tend to want to know would be the regulatory approvals, the people who are going to improve those devices. Again, you may have a problem with the device, so a, a device may get recalled, for it may, be, it may have malfunctioned, it may be faulty, and so then we need to look at the history of that device in order to improve it for the future, so that the same mistakes are not made again. But there are several issues in capturing design rationale. So what are these issues? Firstly, currently, there are no standalone design rationale method or system exists to capture the rationale of medical devices. Also, capturing design knowledge can be costly and time-consuming, and there can be many legal implications in capturing design rationale. Um, a, a very short example I'll give you is, you make a medical device, uh, hundreds of patients or clin uh, clinicians use this device, a problem doesn't occur with this device. Now, then a problem occurs. It's not because of the people who were not using that device correctly, but it could be a manufacturing problem with that device, for example, um, not a design problem. So then the manufacturers would want to, to look at the rationale of how that device was created the way it was to understand how to manufacture that product better in the future so these mistakes do not happen again. Also, the regulatory uh, authorities for medical devices, for example, in the USA, it's the FDA, and it's the European Commission here in the EU, they may also want to look at the rationale of that device to see how that device was made, and, to see, and also to see that if this device is approvable for public use. Final qu uh, a question that's up here to ask you guys is, I mean, with this we can discuss in the break, actually. I think it's probably more advisable to discuss that then. But would you ask telehealth designers to properly document every decision they make, even if it adds a burden to them? So that's just something to think about for now. And with that, I shall let's window conclude. <laughs>